Hi, uh, my name is Lisa Ross. I'm a visual artist. I work both in photography and video, but I also collaborate with artists that work in different mediums, both to stretch my own way of thinking and working and also to make work that's more effective. Um, over the past, well, past a lot of years, I've been making a number of bodies of work that come out of the time that I spent in the Uyghur homeland. So that started off as work that I did by myself, and then it moved into more collaborative work with um, artists from the region. Thank you. Things in the region, in the Uyghur region, started to change. And because of the changes that were happening in the region, my work had to change, I felt. My message had to change. So I wasn't just working in terms of the aesthetics of my work with artists, Uyghur artists, but I began to work more with the politics of the region, and which was very, um, I found it to be very complicated as an artist to then position my work in a more political context. And also it was really about in the end, it was really about human rights. So I came into making work that was related to human rights from not starting off in that area, but ending up in that area. So it was a very personal journey. Um, I had a lot of friends that were affected directly or disappeared in the region. And so my work began to address those issues and concerns. What art was able to do that I think other things are not able to do is like normally you'll read an article about something that happened and you're moved by it. But what happened in the gallery space is people came into the space. And for many people, it was their first introduction to what is Uyghur and what is this area? What are these images? And so people are first pulled in by the visual. There's a level, I think that art pulls people in in a sense through their heart, because people have to look at these images, they were large images, and, and there was a very like textural material um, relationship to the people in these images. And so you walked away from this experience, not just learning about a people and a place and something that happened, but feeling it in this very deep way that I don't think other mediums or other ways of learning about something can quite get to. For me, the interplay of art and advocacy was very organic. And because it was so organic, um, I grew. I had to grow. Uh, so like one exhibition that I had, I ended up calling I Can't Sleep. And it was I Can't Sleep homage to a Uyghur homeland. It worked in terms of the content, but more importantly, it worked in terms of how so many people were feeling. That feeling where you can't sleep, A, because of what's going on, and just imagining like someone that you know so well in a place that you have no idea what it looks like, and now you're, you want to try and address that with your artwork, that's a huge challenge. And so, it's easy to kind of give up or come up with something like maybe too easy. And so really pushing, my, I really had to push myself. It was uncomfortable uh, to make work that I felt really um, challenged both me in a way that I grew. And it also really addressed the subject matter. I mean, the advocacy work, I felt that we 100% um, like 90% of people that walked into this space where we share this work, I felt they walked away with a lot. We gave a lot and they walked away with a lot. Um, sometimes there are real like basic things like posters or Instagram, but I think uh, there are also more creative ways where you're pushing the boundary with your art form. And I think, for me, when it comes to human rights work, 
collaboration with people from different mediums is probably a tool that I find can take the work to a much uh, deeper, more complex place. Because I think often the advocacy work is also complex. And so in a sense, like bringing together different mediums will help address that complexity.